What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. That's right, we're back with the ever popular Shark Scientist reacts to shark attack videos that lots of you out there know and love. Coming up today then, we've got this insane double great white shark attack on a surfer that was caught on film, the infamous Everglades boat toss shark bite, and that wild encounter with a tiger shark who rammed a kayak in Hawaii. Before we start though, as always, I'd like to remind you all that shark attacks are still exceptionally rare. I know we see a lot of them in this series, but the videos are still a rarity. My hope is that by showing you these and analyzing them, we can learn a little bit more about shark behavior. We can also try to understand how and why these incidents happen and learn how to not find ourselves in the same situations. Right, okay, let's get stuck in. So up first, we've got this clip of an oceanic white tip shark in the Red Sea all the way back from 2009. I did show you all this one briefly when we did that video about shark threat displays last season. Click that link there, by the way. I don't know if you can see it. I'm in a tiny circle. It's somewhere in the top right. But we can see here this oceanic white tip shark is 100% showing signs of a threat display, which is where its pectoral fins are bent down and depressed, like you can see here. When sharks are doing it, it tells you that for whatever reason, that particular shark is pissed off about something. Oceanic white tip sharks are pelagic species, which means they don't have territories per se, but but that doesn't mean they don't get annoyed when people are in their personal space. Anyway, the shark circles back and around a few times and then gets a few bops on the nose from the diver with his underwater camera, which in this situation is absolutely the correct thing to do. I've always said to you guys, if you're ever out diving or snorkeling with sharks, having something in your hands to keep between you and the shark is so important because you don't wanna to have to end up using your hands to push the shark away. That's a surefire way to lose your hand. Something like an underwater camera or a GoPro with a pole, anything will do, just something that you can put between you and that animal. As to why this oceanic white tip shark was annoyed, it's tough to say. There's a bunch of different potential reasons. It could have been annoyed by the number of divers in the water, the bubbles going off from those divers, or it could have been drawn in by the electrical impulses of that underwater camera. Regardless, when you see a shark doing that with its pectoral fins, it's definitely time to leave because that shark is telling you in no uncertain terms that it's not happy. I think if that guy didn't have the underwater camera, he'd have probably been bitten. Another interesting context point to make here though is that this video was taken in May 2009 at St. John's Reef in the Red Sea. One month later in June, a woman was fatally bitten by an oceanic white tip shark at this very same reef. We of course can't know for sure if this individual in the video was the same one that was responsible for that fatal attack four weeks later, but it's interesting to speculate. If it was, this shark was perhaps showing signs of what it was about to go and do. It might have been a really malnourished shark that was just desperate to feed, or it could have been a particularly bold and aggressive individual. I do find that interesting though. Okay, next up, we're going back even further now, all the way back to the year 2000. This 15 year old surfer here called Shannon Ainsley is shredding it up at a pretty popular surf break in South Africa. And the video I think is being filmed by a couple who are on holiday who just happened to be filming. But in doing so, they managed to capture this absolutely wild piece of footage. Footage. It's kind of tough to see because of the video quality, but if you see these little handy circles here, you can see Shannon is about to catch a wave when he's knocked completely off his board by a great white shark. Legs sprawled up in the air, the shark has grabbed Shannon by the arm and taken him underneath the water, but as it does so, a second great white shark moves in from the other side almost at exactly the same time. Two, he's been attacked by two great white sharks at the same time. That is horrendous. Animal Planet did do a little recreation of what was happening under the water, which we can see here. So the first shark takes Shannon's arm and hand, pulling him down and under the water. And then a split second later, the second shark comes in from behind and goes for his head and shoulders. According to Shannon, the second shark actually missed him and ended up bumping his back and his head from behind and it was that bump from the second shark that removed him from the jaws of the first shark. Talk about a lucky break. Well, well I guess it's not that lucky really. <laughs> Incredibly, Shannon manages to get to the surface and get back on his board and then after about a minute catches a wave into the shallows where the other surfers rush over to help him. I think reading up around the incident, he did have some pretty bad damage to his hand, which was in the first shark's mouth. I think two of his fingers were severed, his wrist was broken, and he had a big puncture hole in his hand. So in this situation, I think we've got a classic case of double mistaken identity here. Shannon is in that murky, turbid water, and the first shark has gone in for a bite, and the second is just trying to capitalize on 
that situation. We obviously don't know if the first shark would have let him go on its own had the second shark not bumped into him and removed him from those jaws, but I think because neither of the sharks came back for another go while Shannon was at the surface, I don't think these sharks were entirely sold on this being a meal. They've had plenty of time to come back around for another go, but neither of them did, and in that time, Shannon's managed to get back on his board and after a minute catches a wave in. A minute is a long time, so yeah, I think this one's mistaken identity. The crazy thing here though is that apparently four years after this incident, Shannon actually ended up saving a guy who was being attacked by a great white shark while he was out surfing. You'd think that the fear would take hold because of the trauma of the first incident, but instead of swimming away, he swam towards the guy and his board who were getting chomped on by a white shark. Luckily, Shannon managed to get the surfer onto his own board and then paddled to safety without a scratch on either of them. I think that's wild though. Two near-death shark incidents in the space of four years. If he didn't believe in guardian angels before, he definitely does now. Okay, next up. Ah, yes. I know loads of you will have seen this one before. It's pretty short, so I'm just going to loop it and slow it down for you all. So this is one that went viral not that long ago. I think it was earlier this year, and it's absolutely insane. So this guy's out kayaking near Oahu in Hawaii when a big old tiger shark just charges through the water and bites down on the side of his kayak. It all happens so quickly, but after a little kick on the nose with his foot, the shark swims off. It's all pretty crazy, and I just don't know how he's not been toppled over in that kayak with the amount of force it's been hit with. <laughs> I'm just thinking now, whatever company makes that kayak model should definitely be milking this video as much as they can. Shark-proof kayaks. So what's going on here then? Well, there's a few different things that I'm noticing from the video. So he's definitely out fishing for a start. You can see all that gear in the kayak and supposedly reading around this incident, he had caught a grouper just before it happened, but there wasn't any bait in the water at the time. Then I'm looking at the kayak. That's a big yellow object. And we know that for some weird reason, sharks don't particularly like the color yellow. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a video about that, by the way. So on the first watch, you could say, yeah, there's dead fish in the water or there was dead fish in the water at some point and that shark has just been razzed up or it's maybe gone for an attack because of that yellow kayak. But I did do some more reading around this incident and it turns out that not long after this happened, the lads who were out fishing in the kayaks came across a floating dead monk seal, not too far from where the tiger shark had rammed them. And as soon as I read that, it made so much more sense. I'm almost 99% sure that this is a resource guarding defense charge, which is kind of like territoriality, but when there's food or prey in the water. The tiger shark had killed the monk seal nearby, spotted the kayak in the water, and then rammed one of them to tell them to back off. Tiger sharks can get pretty defensive over their prey items, and they'll do this to other shark species to ensure that they get their meal. Unfortunately, they'll also do it to humans as well, whether you're in the water or in a kayak like this guy was. Some of you might remember way back in one of the first shark scientist reacts to shark attack videos we did on the channel, there's a clip of an underwater photographer who gets a little bit too close to a tiger shark who's predating on a turtle, and the shark charges him, admittedly a lot slower than in this example, but it comes up, mouth open wide to his camera, and then swims back down to the turtle. I'll put the link in the top right if I can find it. Well, the same situation is happening here. This tiger shark is guarding that monk seal prey item and doesn't want anything to get in the way of it eating that seal. It's a lesson to learn though, when sharks are predating on their natural prey items, don't get too close to it. Realistically, it's just better to get out of the water at that point because that shark can quite easily turn around and do something like this. Okay, up next, we've got another one of the viral shark attack videos that were doing the rounds earlier this year. And yep, it's another Florida man. This, I believe, is in the Everglades in Florida, which is basically like a big estuarine swamp with murky water. Not the type of place you want to go swimming in. Anyway, this kid decides it's a good idea to stick his hands in the water and within seconds gets chomped on by a shark who just tosses him out the boat and into the water. <laughs> Ouch. It's really tough to see what species of shark this is, but based on the location, I'd say it's probably one of two, either a bull shark or a lemon shark. I'd lean to it probably being a bull shark, but because we only see it for a split second, it's really hard to tell. Looking at the size of it, it's still a relative youngster that's probably chilling out in the safe waters of the Everglades before it gets a little bit bigger and moves out to the open ocean. But this is wild. Why he's decided to put his hands in the water, I will never know. They're clearly out fishing, so there's bait and hooks in the water. I did just pause the recording quickly there and read though that the lad in the video says he was washing his hands when the shark bit him. I mean, come on, dude. Just wash your hands with some bottled water or something. <laughs> I've not had the sound on this clip for you guys, but have a listen to the conversation that they're having before he gets bitten. Oh, you put your hands in there. <laughs> <laughs> Two seconds won't do anything. 
the one dude was just like, no, nope, I straight up wouldn't be putting my hands in that water. And the other guy's like, nah, two seconds will be fine. Cue shark tossing him out the boat. I know I joke here, but the kid was absolutely fine bar a few cuts here and there on his hand. And he's probably learned his lesson now. Don't wash your hands in the Everglades. Darwin Award nominee right there. So for me then, I think this is another mistaken identity one here. He's wiggling those hands and fingers around in the water, splashing them around. So for a juvenile bull shark, that's definitely gonna look like a struggling prey item, like a fish or a bird at the surface of the water, and it's moved in quickly and just had a bite. It just shows you though, that even the smaller individuals have enough power and force to bite down and launch you from a boat. Wild. And then finally for you all today, we've got another pretty short one, but I do think it's really interesting. I've not got a location on this one for you all, but the shark in question is definitely a bull shark. So the bull shark is below the free diver here and does a little charge towards him as he's coming up to the surface. So it's not really an attack, but again, there's a few signs there from the shark. What's that bull shark doing with its pectoral fins? Yep, you got it. It's a fin depression. We've got another agonistic threat display here. This is another great example of reading shark behavior and recognizing a situation before it turns ugly. I'll bet that that bull shark has been swimming around for a good while with those fins in a depressed position. And it's at that point, you've got to be able to recognize it and get the hell out of there. Fortunately for this free diver, maintaining eye contact with the shark and then a lurch forward was enough to spook it so that it swam off, but still, Keep an eye out for those pectoral fins, guys, and see how they've got them positioned. As to why this bull shark got annoyed, we don't have the full video to know for sure, but again, I'm noticing the color of those freediving fins in his weight belt, which are both yellow. I can also see towards the bottom of the seabed there something that looks like it could be a spear gun or maybe a grapple gun, so I'm wondering whether this freediver was spearing fish or maybe grappling lionfish, and the bull shark's just been getting a bit too close and he's just dropped it. I'm not sure. There's not much information surrounding this video. So it could either be a defensive charge from the shark because of those yellow fins and the weight belt, or it could be because the shark has been razzed up by speared fish. I'm not really sure on this one. What do you guys think? Do you reckon that's a spear gun on the seabed? Let me know in the comments. So there we go, guys. There's your latest roundup of shark attack clips from the internet. Which one of those freaked you out the most? For me, I think it's definitely that double white shark attack on the surfer. Can you imagine being in that situation? And imagine how lucky you have to be for the second shark to pull you out of the jaws of the first shark. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see a video about the color yellow and what kind of effects that has on sharks, by the way. Also, please, please do give the video a like if you enjoyed it and make sure you subscribe to the Shark Bites channel with that notifications bell turned on. But before you all head off, we saw a few clips today of the agonistic threat displays by sharks where they depress those pectoral fins. Well, you're gonna wanna click on this video right here where I talk all about them. In this video, we look at fin depression and some other signs that sharks give off before they decide to charge or bite. So if you wanna be able to recognize what those signs are, make sure you click this video right here.